So in this um, short clip we'll talk about digital versus analog information to start with. Um, the difference between them is as follows. For digital uh, information there is always a discrete set of values either high or low um, typically two states um, on or off, high or low uh, with no value in between allowed. Uh, we tend to represent these two states as a string of ones and zeros the larger value or the high value um, made from uh, one long string basically of ones and zeros. So this is what binary computer code is, is made from, a long string of ones and zeros. And it can encode information for use later, for example on CDs or DVDs. Uh, analog information, in contrast, it's always a continuous range of values um, within certain limits, but pretty much any value in between uh, a range is allowed. For example, sound has a large range of values from very quiet to very loud. And in terms of the quality of sound, you can talk about the frequency range as well. There are many, many different frequencies that make up typical sounds. And in class you would have been exposed to uh, at least the digital meters for measuring voltages and currents. So you have um, a digital meter which typically gives you a reading in um, numbers, whole numbers, uh, typically three or four figures. Whereas um, you also could measure those same voltages and currents using um, the old dial or um, needle meters, which of course are the analog version. Okay, so we're going to look at some different uh, electronic components. We'll look at three in particular, the LDR, the light dependent resistor, the thermistor and the transistor. So starting with the, the LDR, um, the circuit symbol you would have seen in, in class already is um, something like this. It's a bit like a resistor, but it has um, a circle around it and two arrows coming in to indicate that it's sensitive to light. So it's a semiconductor device which will vary its resistance depending on light intensity. Typically the higher the light intensity the lower the re resistance will be. And if it's in the dark therefore it will have a very high resistance and therefore uh, use a lot of energy to, elect, to push charge through it. Um, so the volt voltage reading across the LDR goes up in the dark. And the voltage reading across the LDR will go down when it's light. And that is the key thing to remember. So you should always imagine a voltmeter across it and what kind of um, voltage or potential difference um, there will be depending on the light intensity. This is particularly uh, useful because when you connect it um, to a fixed resistor in series with a fixed resistor um, you, you form a potential divider circuit that changes its output voltage according to changes in light intensity. Then we have the thermistor, and the circuit symbol uh, is like a resistor, except we have a line across it like that. It looks a bit like a hockey stick, an ice hockey stick I should say. That will, will remind you that it has to do with temperature change. Um, so in this case the resistance will um, change according to background temperature level. Uh, if we were to plot a graph of resistance against temperature as follows, the shape of the graph is a curve a bit like this. What it means is for very low temperatures you have quite high resistance values and this drops away at higher temperatures. 
um, in a similar way to the LDR, if we connect it in series to a fixed resistor, we can form a potential divider circuit that will change its output voltage according to the change in temperature, which is very useful when we can connect it to an automatic switch like a transistor, which we'll look at next. So, the transistor, this is a component that acts like an automatic switch uh, and in some other applications like an amplifier. Um, it will switch on when at least 0 0.7 volts is put across the uh, base and emitter legs. This allows a larger current to flow through from a collected leg to the emitter leg. Now, where are all these legs? Well, I'll show you the uh, circuit diagram just to remind you. We should have seen this before in class, but here is the diagram. The base leg is the middle leg, the collector leg is the one above, and down to the emitter leg. Typically a small current comes into the base, which then opens up a larger current that flows down from the collector through to the emitter. It can be connected in um, parallel to a potential divider circuit, so that the base leg runs between the two parallel um, loops and if those potential dividers contain an LDR or a thermistor we can create an electronic sensing circuit which uh, will switch on or off according to either light intensity or temperature. So I'll show you a couple of examples to finish. So here's um, the first example of a transistor sensing circuit. You can see the transistor sitting there. The base leg is the joining leg to the potential divider, which is this resistor, a fixed resistor, and this thermistor um, connected together in series, and that's of course connected in parallel to this line here containing the transistor, and this thing inside the dotted line, this is a relay switch, which is an electromagnetic switch. The purpose of this uh, relay switch is to keep the sensing circuit involving the very sensitive transistor separate and away from the large 240 volt AC heating uh, circuit. You can see there's a physical gap here. This works by an electromagnetic effect. The switch is closed only when current comes down through this part of the switch. Now current can only come down here if the transistor is on. So this is how the transistor can control a massive 240 volt current without being in the way of such a large current. Um, if we look first at the supply, here's our 6 volt supply, which is a DC, fairly small value, quite safe to use with the transistor. It is connected, of course, to this potential divider circuit here. Now, as we've learnt, if the thermistor has a high enough voltage, that will provide enough voltage across the base and the emitter legs here, if it's above 0.7 volts, that will switch on the transistor. But it will only happen if this thermistor um, is actually cool enough. Because we know that the resistance of this goes up when it's cold. And if it's got a high resistance, it will use a lot of voltage. Um, you know, Certainly quite a big chunk of the 6 volts will be used by the thermistor when it's, when it's cold. And that will switch on the transistor, and therefore switch on the relay switch, and therefore switch on the heating unit, which is just a big fat resistor connected to a very large AC 240 volt supply. That's when it's cold. Uh, when it gets hot enough, once this has been running for a while, it'll warm up. It could be inside a hot water tank or something. So once, once there's enough heat, the temperature will rise and the thermistor over here it will start to drop its resistance value. Once 
it drops to a certain point, it won't use much of the 6 volts, okay? And instead, this fixed resistor will use more of that 6 volts. But that means there'll be less voltage across the base emitter legs, which is in parallel to this thermistor. So low voltage here means low voltage here. If it's below 0.7, it switches off the transistor, stopping the the current going through this relay switch, turning it off, so this, this opens up again, as it's shown here already, switching off the heating unit. So that's basically one very useful um, circuit that is often used to control temperatures. Okay, here's another circuit example to look at. Um, in this case, we've got an LDR here, light dependent resistor, and a fixed resistor. And they are dividing up the 6 volt potential between them, so that's our potential divided bit. Once again, we have the transistor over here connected across the middle. Now, I'll just mention this little resistor here called RB. Uh, it's basically the base resistor. It protects the transistor from um, having too much current enter and possibly destroy it. Now, once again, in this case, we're going to be sensing light. So obviously this little LED, it's a symbol for an LED, a light-emitting diode, will be either on or off, depending on the ambient light intensity. As you've seen before, when the light intensity is high, the resistance across this LDR drops away, which means the voltage is very low. That means the voltage across here will be low as well, too low to switch on the transistor so it will stay off in the daytime with all light. But when it gets darker and darker, the voltage across this LDR will rise, therefore you will get more voltage across here, enough eventually once it reaches 0.7 volts to switch on the transistor and therefore switching on the LED. So in the dark the LED works, whereas in the, the light or the daytime the LED will not work. And it's all down to the automatic switching of this transistor.